pump a little more into your life. Hello, hello, YouTube. Hello. We have the intro. So, today we're going to be going over how to create your robot as an object in uh, Android Studio. So, first of all, you're you need to know where you're going to write your code, right? So. Conveniently enough, there's a bunch of random files that no one tells you how to use when you first import the FTC app, right? Uh, yeah, this is your best. Okay, so thank, thanks, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so DocCV and OpenCV, ignore those. Those are third party softwares I installed to allow us to run computer vision. We might get into that a little bit later. So, where do you want to write your code? Well, you want to open, open, open up the team code folder, right? Click that. And then now you have to dig through like five different files in order to get to what you actually want. You can see that currently our uh, team code folder is full of a bunch of different stuff. Decent amount of it is example code. And yeah. So how to create your uh, robot as an object. So the class we're using to create our robot as an object today is called Teleop Map. This is the hardware map that my team uses for teleop. Surprise, surprise. So you're going to want to start off with importing all of the hardware you need, right? So you can see it says com.qualcom.robocore.hardware.crservo, DC motor, etc., etc. All of that is stuff you need in order for your rev hubs to recognize your robot, right? And then, you know, it also says the package at the top. Don't worry about that. Just leave it there. So, uh, if you've written objects before in Java, this is really not that complicated, but if you don't know how to write them, it isn't too hard to learn either. So you can see public class teleop, that's the name of the class, you know. So you start off, off by declaring the variable names for all of your <laughs> motors, right? Uh, I don't have any example for servos here because my team has opted not to use servos because we have a bunch of spare motors, right? And we're fitting under eight, so we're all good. So you can see that we have each motor on our robot has a name, right? We have them called motor FR, motor FO, RR, LL, RL, slide, actuator, and intake, right? And then we also have this variable, ignore that. That's that, that actually we don't need that. I'll delete that. Okay, maybe that can get edited out too. Uh, yeah, so you can see all of our DC motors are declared here as variables. Right? It's just that they have to type DC motor instead of like int or string or anything like that. So next you need to uh, local op mode members. Yeah, this is based off the example code. That's why like some of the style that styles of the comments are really weird in some spots because I haven't actually written it. This was originally based off the example code file, but you know. So you can see uh, hardware <laughs> HW map equals no. That's just saying that, you know, there's no hardware map right now. We're going to make it later, right? And then it also starts a timer so that later in other parts of the code, when you check how much time is left, you know, it will have started the timer. So the constructor, um, when I first wrote this, I went, wow, I have no idea what that does, so I'm not going to touch it. And actually, when you look at it, it does exactly what you'd expect, nothing. So it's just so that when you call this class in another class, it you know, actually runs the class, basically, right? It basically allows you to use this class in other classes. Instructor for our class, right? So for those of you who are new to programming objects, like, just don't worry about it. Just leave it there. You need to have these lines of code in order for it to, in order to be able to use this class in other classes, just leave it there. So next, we need to initialize standard hardware interfaces, right? So Wait, you can see public you... void oh. init, right? This is so that this is a method that starts up all of the hardware on the robot, right? And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to initialize, right? So right. <laughs> okay. Every time he says right, just say it right. <laughs> 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 We'll be quiet, we'll be quiet. Okay. So So Okay. So next we have the initialization method, right? 
it does what you expect. Right. It sets up all of the hardware on the robot. So first of all, you remember how earlier we set the hardware map as null because we hadn't made it yet, but we needed a variable to store stuff in? Well, here we at, we're actually assigning values there. You can see hwmap equals ahwmap. Ahwmap is one of the parameters in the initialization method. So first, we need to define the motors, right? So when you first look at right, this, right, you're probably right. going to get confused about what it does, right? So you, you remember earlier we made all of the motors as a variable, right? Here you're doing right. <laughs> DC motor dot class and device name, right? So what this section of this code does is that it searches for a DC motor on the rev hub, right? And this is the name here where it says device name of the DC motor it's going to search for, right? So right. Not like on our rev hub, you know, we have like FR, FL, RR, RL, SA, and IR set as the motor names in the, um, what's it called? The configuration file that we made on the phones when you set up the electronics, right? Right. Right. So, yeah, that's, it looks like a lot, but it isn't much, right? That will be pretty much true for the rest of this section of code since it's a bunch of stuff duplicated over and over. Next, we have you have to set the direction of everything, right? You just set it as right. forward or reverse, right? Okay, I literally just... <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. So... Next, we have to set the direction of all the motors on our robot, right? Right. Right. So it basically says whether a positive value will spin the motor clockwise or counterclockwise, right? So right. Uh, you can see it here it says set to reverse, set to forward, set to reverse or set to forward, right? Right. I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm back. Okay, wait, I, I actually need to delete these comments because I changed this code and it is no longer code. True, wait. Okay, so here you can see that we're setting the direction of all of the motors on our robot. It basically decides whether the robot will, s whether the motor will spin clockwise or counterclockwise when given a positive value with a set power function. We'll get to that later. All right, so. Yeah, it says quarter of a Okay, I know I keep on saying right, Isaac. I can feel this man holding back. I can feel it. Like, there's these awkward pauses where, like, where in its place you would have said right, but no. Okay. <clears throat> so, next, we have to give the power. Uh, so, next, we just give the motors a value for power, right? Since this is just the setting up all the hardware, we want that power to be zero so that the robot doesn't take off over a cliff as soon as we initialize. So yeah, just motor name dot set power zero, right? All of these different right, methods right, you see right. here are just stored in the DC motor class, which is hidden somewhere in these amazing files. I don't know where, but it's hidden somewhere. Next, you want to set the zero power behavior. This isn't a requirement, but something I heavily recommend you do. So there's two zero power behaviors that are important. There's float and break. Basically, when uh, the zero power behavior is sent to float, it will make it so that uh, when the motor power is set at zero, it doesn't lock. This is really good for driving during teleop. That's why you see all of the drive motors are set to float. Because when our driver lets off the joystick, the robot doesn't suddenly lock up and like lurch, right? It just keeps on moving smoothly even if it drifts a little bit. Meanwhile, for like stuff like our linear slide and actuator and intake, where we need stuff to stay solid when our driver's not pressing anything, we have it set to break. So next, we since this is our file for teleop, we set all of the motors to run without encoders. You can use run using encoders if encoders are installed, right? Like, you can even do that if it is teleop is a big deal. We just set it to run without encoders so that all of our motors are running at 100%. When you're setting uh, it to run using encoders, 
uh, all of the higher power motors will basically match the speed of the slowest motor, right? And I don't mean like, oh yeah, one sets, has the power set to 100, or, or one, one has the power set to 0 0.1, we're all gonna run at 0 0.1. What I mean is that like, it'll compensate for the factory differences like, oh, Timothy at the factory dropped this motor 50 feet off a catwalk, but they still shift it out, so it runs a little slower. It'll adjust for that. And then, yeah, you can see. Right, 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 yeah. 